Hi friends, welcome to my channel Optometry Online. In today's video, we are going to see MCQ questions regarding glaucoma. First slide. First question is, the painless loss of vision is seen in all cases except the options are papilledema, artery occlusion, angle closure glaucoma and cataract. The answer is angle closure glaucoma. The angle closure glaucoma typically presents the strong pain and the patient is, uh, is it's usually an ocular emergency and the patient is characterized by uh, increased IOP, corneal edema, shallow anterior chamber and a mid dilated pupil. Next question. Breaks in decimates membrane in infantile glaucoma is called as option A, acute high drops, option B, embryo toxon, option C, Vox tray, option D, half tray. The answer is option D, half tray. Half tray are the horizontal stretch marks in decimates membrane of the cornea due to stretching of the cornea. Third question, which of the following is not considered as a definitive glaucomatous visual field defect? Option A, bitemporal hemianopia. Option B, paracentral scotoma. Option C, germ scotoma. Option C, sedal scotoma. The answer is option A, bitemporal hemianopia. The other three types of scotoma are observed in the glaucomatous damage of varying visual uh, optic nerve changes, but whereas the bitemporal hemianopia is classic of the neurological defect, especially of the chiasmal region. The most common precipitating factors for the angle closure glaucoma option A axial hyperopia, option B steepening of cornea, option C thickening of lens, and option D pupil size. The answer is option D pupil size because the main culprit behind the angle closure glaucoma is the pupillary block which happens. So when the, when the pupillary block happens, there's accumulation of the acquit behind the iris which can cause iris to bulge forward and thereby it will occlude the angle and prevent the Aquest to drain off the angle of anterior chamber and thereby increasing the IOP. So, pupillary size is a very important precipitating factor of angle closure glaucoma. Next question Which of the refractive error is mostly associated with angle closure? Answer A um, Hyperopia, option B, myopia, option C, astigmatism, and uh, option D, none of the above. The answer is option A, hyperopia. You all know that the hyperopic eyes are little um, structurally little smaller compared to the myopic eyes so they have a decreased axial length and they have a shallow anterior chamber and so there's a crowding of the angle so they are the predisposing factors that the eyes might develop for risk of angle closure compared to the other refractive errors next question which of the following tonometer gives a real estimate of intraocular pressure option a applanation tonometer option b dynamic contour tonometer Option C, Perkins tonometer. Option D, non-contact tonometer. The answer is option B, dynamic contour tonometer because we all know that the uh, corneal thickness is one of the factors which will influence IOP. So this dynamic contour tonometer, the, it uses a principle called contour matching and it is independent of the corneal thickness. So it gives a near accurate assessment of intraocular pressure. Next question. The uvo scleral outflow of the aqueous humor is increased by prostaglandins, beta blockers, myotics, carpodic and inhibitors. The answer is prostaglandins. Which of the anterior most structure is seen in gonioscopy? Schwabi's line, trabeculum eschwab, scleral spur, ciliary body band. The answer is the first anterior structure is the Schwabi's line. Which quadrant of the lamina cribrosa appears to be least affected by the increased IOP? Superior, inferior, nasal, temporal. The answer is nasal. So as you all know, as the, when the glaucoma damage starts, it just first starts with the superior and the inferior um, neuroretinal rim and then it goes to the temporal side and the nasal is usually preserved until late stages. That is why the patient present to us in the temporal end of vision. Next question, which of the following ocular parameters changes in congenital glaucoma, axial length, corneal thickness, myopia, anterior chamber angle? The answer is axial length because the sclera is very elastic and there's a stretching of the eye which happens so thereby increasing in the axial length. Aqueous humor is formed by the options epithelium auxiliary body, posterior surface of iris, lens and pars plana. The answer is epithelium of the ciliary body. What optic disc change is more specific for glaucoma? Option A is exposed lamina cribrosa, focal notching of the rim, nasal displacement of the vessels, and peripapillary atrophy. The answer for this is option B, 
focal notching of the rim. It is a classic sign. It is the earliest sign of the glaucomatous visual field damage. Next question. Glaucom flecken is a feature of answer A. Uh, sorry, option A, acute angle closure glaucoma. Option B, pseudo exfoliation glaucoma, juvenile glaucoma, and phacolytic glaucoma. So, you usually see glaucom flecken in acute angle closure glaucoma. So, they are the classic sign of previous angle closure attacks. So, they, they are usually the necrosis of the epithelium of the anterior lens capsule. Next question. Krukenberg spindle is a classic feature of angle closure, secondary glaucoma, pigmentary glaucoma, congenital glaucoma. So, it is a classic feature of option C, pigmentary glaucoma. So, what happens is there is a rubbing of the iris and the ciliary body. Um, so, there's a iris pigment which has been re released and that gets deposited on the corneal endothelium. So that since there's a rubbing between the iris and the zonules of the um, ciliary body, so this iris uh, pigments get collected by the aqueous current. So they form a spindle-like pattern. So that is why it is called as a Krukenberg spindle. It is usually seen in pigmentary glaucoma. Next question. Plateau iris syndrome can be best detected using slit lamp, direct ophthalmoscope, FFA and UBM. So this plateau iris syndrome is caused by the rotation of the ciliary body, which is uh, usually in the posterior chamber. The other techniques which has been mentioned here uh, doesn't give much information about the posterior chamber, but whereas the UBM is a one line only technique, uh, com comparatively gives a better information of the posterior, um, posterior segment. Next question. Excessive fluorescent amount in applanation myers can cause underestimation, overestimation, or no effect. So it usually causes overestimation. Thicker myers, we have to uh, give a false high reading compared to a um, less amount of fluorescent. So always uh, amount adequate amount of fluorescent is very necessary for an accurate measurement of intraocular pressure using applanation. Next question. Which of the following imaging modalities helps in Functional assessment of optic nerve, OCT, automated perimetry, FFA, and glaucoma dinoxins. The answer is automated perimetry. The other three uh, imaging modalities, they assess the structural uh, assessment, but whereas automated perimetry, they have the ones which helps us to know the functional one, which is a visual field. So, automated perimetry gives a better uh, information regarding the functional assessment compared to the other three. Next question. Iridocorneal angle can be assessed by gonioscope, direct ophthalmoscope, slit lamp, and indirect ophthalmoscope. It is better viewed by the gonioscope. Cannot be assessed by the other techniques. Blood in the iridocorneal angle is seen in Sturge Weber, spherophakia, phacolytic glaucoma, and option D, accent field syndrome. The answer is Sturge Weber syndrome. So, uh, in this condition, that we can see the blood in the angle because of the increase uh, in a special when, whenever gonioscope is done. So, this is a classic condition which is seen in Sturge Weber syndrome. Coming to the last question, which of the following drugs, anti-glaucoma drugs, is contraindicated in uveitis? Option A, prostaglandin analox. Option B, beta blockers, midriatics, alpha adrenergic agonist. The answer is prostaglandin analox because it can cause a worsening of uveitis and cystoid macular edema. So it is better to avoid prostaglandins in the patients who are already having a case of uveitis. That's it for the video today. If you like the video, kindly subscribe to my videos, uh, videos and uh, 